Howard Stern Show ends. And the wrap-up show. Welcome to the wrap-up show. The wrap-up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look at the Stern Show. Call in. 888-STERN-100. The wrap-up show with John Hine and Gary Del Monte. The wrap-up show. I am Jason Kaplan, sitting here as always with John Hine. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. There you go, buddy. And we are here on the wrap-up show to wrap up what just happened on today's Howard Stern Show. Uh, with me in the studio is Al on the board and, of course, Steve Brandana, who's always here. And we had a big, big show today. Uh, oh, and also, you, we're going to be taking your calls. Give us a call, 888-STERN-100. That's 888-STERN-100. We want to hear from you and everything you thought about the show today, including, John, what I would imagine is a great Possibly the definitive Ben Stiller appearance. I, I'm yes. here. I've arrived. John's not going to talk to me. John's, <laughs> John's in a bad way. So it's a Gary and Jason show. But don't worry, there'll be a lot of other people coming too. If you yeah. don't like Jason, uh, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You really should. Well, hardly... Don't pepper the audience with you might not like Jason. <laughs> I want everybody to stay tuned in. <laughs> wow, that is. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> So yes, today was a great Ben Stiller appearance. You talk, I guess you just went down the whole list of everything. No, we I, was about. Just, I was saying that I think this was the definitive Ben Stiller interview. I, that's what I was uh, saying. But, you, you know, when Ben came in today, I mentioned this to him a little bit in the green room before and afterwards. I actually took him to the side and I said, I want to thank you because you've been coming on our show for years steadily. You've been such a supporter of the show. You always come and you give a great interview. Right. But I also know that he and his wife listen to the show a lot. So I think if um, if you understand sort of Howard's uh, um, pacing and you understand the show, like today when Howard said uh, Walter Mitty, you know, he was a douche. And Ben goes, oh, yeah, he was a douche. That was what, when they wrote the book. It was Walter Mitty, the douche. Right. Like, somebody else might have been thrown by that. Right. Um, he was very good today. Talked about everything. He was very good. But more importantly, my boss, your boss, Howard Stern, did an amazing interview. I, we were saying this after the show. I was talking in the office that, you know, Ben's done the show many times. And he's always very good on the show. But today sounded like a new interview. Today was like he might as well have never been on the show before because I learned so many new things about him and heard him in a new light. Well, Howard's into like talking to people about their careers. Like I said yesterday, you know, how do you start? I thought one of the interesting things that I got out of today is you know how he got to start, how how his mother called and got him in a play. And I know that there's a lot of people that complain. Go well, if my mother was famous, got me in a play. I'd be a big star too. And I was saying to Jason in the office, there's so many people I know whose father owned a successful business, and then they gave it to the kid, and that kid drives the business into the ground. So, okay, his parents are in the business, and they've now introduced Ben to the business. That works for like a second and a half. If yeah, you can't get deliver, your foot in the door. Get your foot in the door. Right. If you can't deliver, you're done. You're done. So all these opportunities that Ben got, he made the most of, but at the end of the day, he, you know, it's almost like somebody calling up and saying, hey, would you draft my kid for the baseball team? If you can't play baseball, you're going to suck. Stern Nation, play. Stern Nation, we want to know what you think of Ben Stiller. Give us a call. 888-STERN-100. You know, I have to say that the Ben Stiller show, the original, the Fox show, uh, was one of the funniest shows. I, when I was a kid, I loved that show, and he used to do this Bruce Springsteen uh, yes. uh, impression that was just off the charts. Now, that was Andy Dick. Jimmy Andy Garofalo. Dick, yep. And uh, Bob Odenkirk, who, oh, really? uh, who you know writes every great comedy, stars in every great comedy. I mean, it was a, really a dream team of comedy, um, except for possibly Jimmy Garofalo. But the rest of it was very, very funny. Yeah, but I mean, he talked to him about Zoolander. He talked about Saturday Night Live. He talked about his writing partners. There were, there were a lot of things I learned today. Benji, what did you learn from Ben Stiller today? He, I, he's, he's a likable guy. He's, uh, he's, he looks more and more like his dad, who I really like a lot. You know what? I bet a lot of people... A lot of people know his dad was is uh, from Seinfeld, right? But I, I bet a lot of people think his mom was the woman, like George's mom. I know, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But but if you're if you're older like me, Mira and Stiller, uh, Mira and Stiller are virtually inseparable, and you absolutely know who. Both I, of them you know are. what? That's so funny because I loved the mom, George's mom on Seinfeld. I never thought it was Mira Stiller, but now why? I wonder why it wasn't Mira Stiller. Well, because somebody gets cast for one right, part. Right. They're, they're just different. Yeah, I know parts. they're different, but uh. Oh, that was funny. Jerry Stiller is so funny. He, he, for years, he was on, after Seinfeld, he was on King of Queens. Yes. He was great on that. I mean, he's a really, really funny dude. Uh, and also today, um, I'm getting, I'm getting a, a note from John in the back office that, uh, Ben 
kind of sounded like he was almost done acting or didn't sound like he enjoyed acting as much today. Did you pick up on that, Gary? I picked up on that he enjoys directing and that if this movie is a huge hit, he can get more uh, jobs directing. If this movie isn't a huge hit, he's got to go back to being box office Ben. And when it comes to directing, I know he's talked about it on this show before, what a blow it was to his ego and possibly to his career at the time. But he directed The Cable Guy. Uh, which at the time, you know, was kind of known as Jim Carrey's first, you know, movie that didn't make a lot of money. Right. Cable Guy is awesome. Cable Guy stands the test of time. It's got its moments. It's got its and... moments. And that's also written by Judd Apatow. Yeah. Written by Judd Apatow. Hey, we're going to go to Rick in Pittsburgh. Rick in Pittsburgh. Rick, what's up, hey, man? Hey, guys. Uh, this is an awesome show. And, and I guess my question to go related to Ben is, would you consider him among the top five most down to earth um, celebrities that come in to the show? I do, because uh, today was a perfect example of that. He had nobody with him today. No publicist, no no uh, no manager, no nobody from the movie company. And I think that that says a lot about how comfortable he is coming in here. I chatted with him a lot before the show, and I've, every time I've met him, I found him to be really one of the nicest guys in the world. And, uh, yes, one of the most down-to-earth celebrities I've ever met. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he flew in on his magic carpet, but other than that, uh, he was pretty down-to-earth. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, you see that with his wife, too, and I had a chance to know her briefly just because a friend of hers, her roommate, was on a soap opera, and so we were friends, and, and his wife, Christine, is just amazing. I trust, Gary, you probably met her before, and I think that's part of what I think, you know, uh, captures who Ben is, is the fact that, you know, he uh, he found someone that's down to earth, he raises his family, he's a regular father, and uh, it's just impressive. Yeah, I have met Christine once up here, but uh, it's funny. I got on the treadmill last night, and I turned on whatever channel was on, and uh, uh, Dodgeball was on. Oh, she's so hot. In that movie. <laughs> she's, she's, he, she's very, very pretty. She's very attractive, and she's uh, very good in Zoolander as well. Hey, yeah, John, Gary, man. I don't want to be—I don't want to come off like a schnur. I'm facing some medical bills. If there's any mm -hmm. chance that you have that five hundred dollars, is there any chance I could get a shot at that? You know, Rick, I hate to say this to you, I'd probably give it to you if I had it. I've been giving away money all week. This is the one day I don't have any money to give away. Hey, Rick, what happens if you just don't pay your medical bills? Like, did you, what did you, does that ruin your credit, or how does what happens? Oh, it, it can, and like I said, the, the tough part's when you're dealing with an insurance company oh, because I had uh, surgery on my arm, and, uh, you know, they, they, they messed with you. And so, you know, listen, I mean, I, I take care of myself and take care of my bills, but it gets tough. Yeah. I, I feel for you, Rick. You I, know, like, I, I, I know uh, John Hine has sent a lot of money to listeners. Like privately, what's so this? John it might be a good person to reach John's out. John's got the checkbook out. John is writing zeros. Is it, jo um, is it they're just zeros? I wish I could talk. <laughs> they're just zeros. <laughs> is it John for Jesus? Is one of those Jesus nuts that's out there during the uh, during uh, during the time? What else are we talking about? Sorry, Rick. <laughs> Let's go to line four. Uh, Ike in Toronto. Someone choking, John. Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Good. I just like to say I miss John Hine and Jason. You got to slow down a little slow bit, down. man. You're very excited. Shot out of the cannon. You're correct. There you go. You shot out of the cannon, and uh, you got to you know keep up the Johnny's pace there. I, I love it. your show. And you guys are awesome, man. Guy yeah. brings up a great point that, you know, to be John Hine, you have to be devoid of any passion whatsoever. So I'm with you. Uh, I'm Butch is Texas. Butch, what's going on, Butch? Fuck you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> that was passion. Good. How are you, Gary? Good. Hey, uh, I thought it was great when that guy uh, played the game earlier this morning and Ronnie came in screaming and hollering, hang up on him, hang up on him. And then he did. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. That was fantastic. Goal. Agreed. I think that, you know, the whole office was screaming and yelling, and, and when Howard gives people a second chance on games, people get really irritated in the back office because they're like, hey, we really, you know, you really got to make this a game of chance. And with the birthday show, you know, these tickets are so hard, it, if, it's, if you don't play the game right, then it doesn't work. But I, Howard, I, Howard feels bad. Yeah, I thought Howard had such a great point of... I'm not against people that li like my show and like me and like what I put out. Like I, I love that they appreciate my show and want to come. Right. And that they, it's, it's very low chances you'll even get through on the phone when you finally get through and the person you can tell really loves the show, really wants to be there. It's hard to say no. But, but, but oh. I listen, you listen to. But any, it was a great. It was it made it. It made it more dramatic. If you listen to any other radio show, terrestrial or otherwise, you know when they give away, uh, you know, a hundred dollars at seven twenty in the morning. If you don't win, you don't win. But, you, you know, the, in the back office, we can see. So whoever was on the phone today begging for tickets that Ronnie hung up on, uh, and thank you, Ronnie, for that. You know, I understand that that guy really wants tickets. We also have 30 other people on the line that want tickets just as much as that guy. And 
the whole point is that if, if you're just going to give the guy the tickets and just give the guy the tickets, don't play the game and then give the guy the tickets anyway. Because, I, I mean, look, Howard can do whatever he wants, but it's not like there's a shortage of people on the phone looking to get these tickets. And, and I picked up on the girl that called later on that I yelled at that said she didn't get tickets, and I apologized to her. I forgot that that guy had lost it. In my mind, that guy had won the tickets, and we're limited how many we can give away. And I picked up on her, and I said, listen, I have, I have no beef against you. Yeah. It, it wasn't about you. It was about the tickets. But Howard and Robin immediately turned it into like I'm anti whoever she was. By the way, you know who was the angriest in the office uh, with that door not ticket giveaway? Who? John Hine. That's how he lost his voice, screaming uh, <laughs> to have to take it down. Hey, look, we got to. Uh, we're going to come back with more from John Lieberman. We're going to be talking about this rap battle and the big news that's going to break in the new year. Don't even know if John knows what that is. I don't even know what that is. I we used to it. rap back in the day, and I can do it still. And also, will Benji <laughs> wear a costume to the holiday party? Should he wear a costume? And what should the costume be? All those and more when we come back on the wrap-up show only on Howard 100. The Wrap-Up Show. Hi, this is Ben Stiller, and you're listening to The Wrap-Up Show with John Hine and Gary Delabate. I don't know. Uh, I don't understand the music for this one. Does anybody? Am I missing something, or is it just Steve? In the Steve, back, give me. Give me uh, there's usually. Come on, Gary. If you don't get the, this, is a second. Zoolander reference, and if if you don't get it, you really need to go back and I, watch. I Zoolander. haven't watched Zoolander in a long time. Clearly, uh, this. Uh, what song is this? Is but it, I, I think Jitterbug. I think Wham. most pe- most fans of Zoolander will appreciate. What, that. How how does it relate? It's what? what him and all of the male models listen to, and oh, especially okay. on the scene where the the gas station blows up. Spoiler alert. I saw that one. I was thinking more of the funeral, but I got you. I got you. Okay. Good work. Welcome back to the wrap-up show here on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Uh, we're taking your calls at 888-STERN-100. We are talked. We just finished talking about Ben Stiller and his epic, amazing performance on the uh, show today. Speaking of epic and amazing performances, we are now in the midst of... I guess a great rapper, if we're to believe his own hype, uh, John Lieberman and John, uh, 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 excuse me, I forget your rap name. Two Live Jew. Two Live Jew, which actually was, oh, wasn't there already a Two Live Jew? By the way, I think I had their album. Hold on a second. In the 90s, yeah. when rap got big, <laughs> I must have thrown away 50 Two Live Jew CDs, meaning not you. Every white Jewish guy called himself Two Live Jew. Yeah, and that was the time around when I was coming to fruition as a rapper. But it's like Dairy Queen. It was like a franchise. Yeah, that's a good rap name. Well, clear Dairy to- Queen. <laughs> but I need to clear up a couple misconceptions and misperceptions that are out there today. Number one, we recorded that about eight months ago. That is and, fact. And that that's is not a conception. That is fact. Okay. That we recorded that eight months ago. Also, fact. I think that it was well produced. I'm not saying that my performance necessarily was outstanding, okay. but I think it's catchy. Next. I mean, the line, I used to rap back in the day, and I can do it still. That's an interesting line. No, it's I not. feel like Next. it's a good hook. Okay. And number th- No, no. You've now ruined your chance to go to number three. I was going to let you go to number three, but now you've ruined it. So I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. Today you announced to the world mm-hmm. that you have retired from rapping. Do you uh, care to elaborate on that? It was pointed out to me by many in this room that you can't retire from something that you weren't making a living doing. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but John Hines suggested maybe I use the word hiatus. The problem with hiatus is that that suggests that I'm considering coming back at some point. I think I'm just finished. I'm finished rapping publicly, meaning I don't want to rap on the show anymore. I'm not going to... I still rap around the house a little bit. It's okay. I'll, I'll do this, some rhymes, but a lot of people sing in the shower. Is this so, going to preclude... Like, would you would you possibly rap at the holiday party? Which no. is public, but not not for the full public. No, because that is still public. I mean, anything you do around you people is public. Why, so, why are you stopping? Because I just, you know, I thought I could get back the skills that I believe I once had. <laughs> I have now had time to reflect on that, among other things. And I don't think I'm going to be the freestyler that I once was. Is there any part of you, and I'm not trying to make you doubt yourself because I've had these sort of uh, uh, self-recognition revelations. Is there any part of you that sits down and goes, maybe I wasn't the person I thought I was? No. So you know you were good. You just can't get it back. Yeah, and it's been confirmed. I mean, no. Julie's called a couple people I went to college with. I was a good rapper in college. Wait, so you think, hey, first of all, I think if you think you're good and you enjoy it, I, I, people here are kind of assholes about that kind of thing, but if you think you're good and you enjoy it, that's your passion. Go for it. But it's not think, my passion. I mean, I mean, that's one of your passions. But the you, you think there was a time that you were much 
that you were better than you are now? Yeah, I think practice makes perfect, and I think I stopped doing is there it regularly. A, is there, can you put that out? Like, do you have that on tape? No, I don't have it on tape. So why don't you? Why wouldn't you continue to practice and get good again? Because I'm not that passionate about it. Can it's we, not that important. To can me. we stop the nonsense? You're not a good rapper. You were never a good rapper, Wait, and you will you never be a good authority. rapper. Time out. I could absolutely say that with authority. Jason, how can you say with authority something that you weren't present for or haven't because heard rap, back in the day? Because rapping, yes, it's a skill to a point, but I don't think it's something that you just get bad at by not doing it. You had plenty of time to prepare. So if you you never, had pl- hold on, don't interrupt me. You had plenty of time to prepare for your battle with Sal. You, you sat home, you wrote lyrics, you thought about it, and you came. And John, I'm just being honest with you. You were Bad is not a worse enough word to say. It was like you had never heard a rap song in your entire life. That's your opinion, but let me no, ask you not. a question. Let me, let's hear John. <laughs> let me ask you a question, Jason. Okay. If you never saw a pitcher pitch 20 years ago, a pitcher who won 20 games, say, two seasons straight, and you've only now seen him pitch 20 years later when he can't get anybody out in the eighth inning as a setup guy, as an old setup guy, how can you say he was never a good pitcher? Because pitchers diminish. You, you get older, your muscles deteriorate. You can still have the same skill you had, you just your body won't cooperate. You don't have the prerequisite skill. Right, there's a physical reason why a pitcher isn't as good as he was 20 years ago. You have no physical excuse for not being better. Yeah, but every no, but every artistic a- endeavor, there's ages where people peak at and and the biggest achievements are at, whether it's whether it's mathematics or a painter. But Eminem I'm might not, not be as great as a rapper, like like actually in terms of how fast he could spit and all this stuff as he was 10 years ago. But you don't hear Eminem and go, wow, this guy sounds like he's never rapped a day in his life. Look, all I'm saying is this. I believe I was good okay. 20 years ago. I believe I'm not good anymore, and that's why I'm hanging Wait, so, out. Well, so you think... You're not good now. Do you really believe that? I do believe that. I believe that I'm not good now. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Well, hold on. I want to take a phone call. Victor in Gainesville. What do you say? Hey, Victor, how are you today? Hey, how you, how's it going, guys? Um, I I just have to tell uh, Mr. Lieberman that uh, I hate to break it to him, but hearing what he sounds like now, he's more delusional than Sal. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was ever that good, to be honest with you. If you're good at one point, you can still be pretty good. Later on in your life, you're horrible, my friend, which means you weren't even that good to begin with. I'm sorry, brother. That's an interesting perspective, and I appreciate it. Hey, Gary, I'll give you a good example. Do you remember, okay, uh, okay, Tom Cruise, that movie where he, he slides on his feet? Risky Business. Okay, the girl that he starred in with it. Uh, Rebecca DeMornay. Her, her dad. What's his name? Jesus Christ. Wally George. Yes. He used to be incredible, oh, right? He, playing? he used to be incredible. And then he died. And, no, no, no. Do you remember the last time he was on our show on the air? How how he w- did not have those chops anymore? Yeah, because he was eighty years old and yes, sick. Yes, that was a literal. John is sick. No, no. But that, but that was a literal hey, physical deterioration. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to move on. As long as we're talking about who's a good rapper, who's not a good rapper, I think we know where John sits with himself. But what do you think of Sal? Good rapper, bad rapper? Where? Chime in on Sal. Sal has moments, I think, of brilliance, and uh, I think Sal has many moments of mediocrity as well. I think I think what I look at you is th- like a guy who plays ball with all the guys, baseball with all the guys in town on Friday nights. You know, you go, you play hardball, not softball, you play hardball, and you're in a league, and you guys have a couple of beers, and you're the best guy on that team. That was probably you, but that doesn't mean you're ready to play Major League Baseball. So I think when you're the big star in your little area, you probably think, hey, I'm really good, but you may not be ready for the big time. That's my I impression. actually think that's a very good analogy. I think you hit the nail on the head. Brand- Brandon in Princeton, welcome to the wrap-up show. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Uh, this week has been fucking hilarious. I- I- I've been rolling on the floor laughing this week with Sal and John. Like, who is feeding him this bullshit that they're any good? Like, they they they, came- they came into the show thinking they're, you know, hot shit and they're awesome. But they get on the show and they're just bombing. They're just awful. Like Sal, Sal naive is just so on Monday. It's Howard and Robin and Fred sold that so good because I I caught it uh, midway uh, and I didn't know that they were joking. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself like, oh my god, are they serious? And they sold it so well because I started believing that they were like actually gonna like put Sal up on uh, radio radio mini hall or whatever. And then, then listening to John rap, dude, you're awful. You're, you're, you're terrible. You're Thank terrible. You. Hey, Sal, here's another. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sal, Sal, I think I find. Um, you know, John and I talk about Sal all the time. John knows Sal better than me, but I think I know Sal pretty well too. Sal's 
a really sweet guy with a great heart, but he is so easy to fuck with. You yeah. know what I mean? And 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 the thing that makes it to me so surprising is that that's all that Sal has done, and that's all he does. Even when he was a stockbroker, a good deal of his day was spent making phony phone calls. So for a guy who does it so often, yeah. not to see it coming his way is always a shocker to me. Steve? I, with with uh, the Sal thing, can I ask John another question? Sure. You know, you hear Sal, when you hear Sal say, I won a contest on the cruise, a singing contest, and I think I'm really good. Do you think, what do you think when you hear that? Do you think that makes him silly, or... Because I'm saying there's no difference between you being the best rapper in your college than Sal winning a cruise ship karaoke contest. That's a sad college. Uh, I mean, look, you may be right. I mean, you may be right, but it's all in, you know, you can feel one way regardless of the outside circumstances. So I believe that Sal believes that he was is a good singer. And did you laugh at that when you heard that on Monday? Like, ha, 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 this guy thinks he can really sing like Michael Buble because he won a... Cruise ship. No, I didn't laugh at it because Sal truly believes that. I mean, and so I didn't truly laugh believe at it. that you truly right. believe that you once were awesome. Here's right. the deal. Well, that's Here's why I have some uh, sympathy, if you will, or some empathy for Sal, Sal in that regard. Sal is not a great singer, but he can carry a tune, and he, ha- he clearly has tone and could hear beat. So if you if he were to say, "Hey, I used to be a much better singer than I am now," you go, "Okay, I could believe that." You are like a singer that is tone deaf and beat deaf, and uh, you know tone what? deaf, 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 D E A F. Anyway, you do rap in the shower. Is that what you were saying? Just to go back to an earlier part. At home, you you rap in the shower. I sing and rap around. And can the you house? give us a little? Uh, no, 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 or, that's, or, no. Who, who are your artists? Who are your I artists? Just, well, no, sometimes I'll just freestyle. Sometimes I'll sing. Depends what's on the radio. All right, we're going to go to the know. phones. I want to take uh, Mike in Manhattan. Mike, what's uh, what do you want to say today? Hey, what's up, Gary? You know, Gary, I got to tell you, I love you, man. You're a good dude. All you guys are good dudes, but don't do not do this to me. Don't. I, I, I spend a lot of time in my car. I'm, I'm, I have a limousine business in the city. I don't want to listen to ja- to, to Jason. Ah. Uh, doing a wrap-up show. He's killing. He's, number one, he's being rude. Number two, you can't give a person like that a little bit of power because now he's going to walk around and he's going to probably be a little bit, you know, uppity. Don't would you host? Whoa, 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 uppity! Let, excuse let me. Benji host it. Excuse let me. me. You know, say, I, listen, listen, Jason. Don't be a tough guy with me, please. Jason, you, you know who you are. Don't be a You're tough a guy with pie. you. Hold don't on, hold be on. A cute, don't I, be a cutie pie with me. Be I, not, I'm being, I'm being truthful. I don't want to listen to you. Well, I don't want to listen to you. Show. So, so, Mike, Mike, there you go. Mike, can I address you? Stay, stay tight. <laughs> I, I want to address it. You know, it's funny. John's voice is shot. And John said, today, uh, I said, you shouldn't do the show. Your voice is so bad, you shouldn't be on the show. But I'm going to be in a little bit late. I'm going to need somebody there to help me. And John said, a lot of people will be here. So I feel comfortable on the air with Jason. However, I wasn't. Jason, I don't mean to insult you. I was unaware that you were going to be taking over the show. Oh, yeah. I, th- I thought you were going to here to help out. No, no. I, I forced my way in. I, I mean, I didn't I didn't ask. I just said, all right, I'll do it. In fact, uh, all throughout the day, people have been giving John their little remedies for how to get his voice better. Everyone's got their own little tips and drinks. And I just take them away. Because I don't. I was like, no, don't help him. The voice needs to get everyone. Sorry you don't like me. I think I'm I'm doing a decent job hosting the show, and we will move on from there to... Let's talk about Benji. Benji and Benji. Duck, Santa Claus, or Benji Bronk, how are you going to come to the party of the year this year? I I won't wear a costume. I wouldn't do it unless Howard said, oh, yeah, that's fine. I want you to be comfortable. That'd be fun to have like someone in a costume there. See, here's the thing I understand. I, I get... I've been where you've been. I've been where I, I, I have put on a suit. Like, God, I just look terrible. I don't want to go out in public like this. I'm fat. I, I get that. But the part where you lose me is where you want to put on alpha that makes you look so, in maybe not to you, like but, to, John. But, but you don't like you don't have the ability to realize how ridiculous you would look to everyone else that you're that in my eyes you're better off in the suit. It's just I just it's it's uh. It's unfortunately it's similar to a little bit to your rap thing. Like I'm caring too much what other people think, like. Uh, I, I, I just to, to to be so fat is uncomfortable. I would be most comfortable. I mean, I, I, I the simplest thing would be like I have a choir robe, like uh, just to put the choir robe on. I love my face. My face, I'm I'm totally cool. Right, with. I'm asking one question for the, this vortex, and then I'm I'm backing out. You, if you're this concerned about your weight and how you look and how people look at you, why don't you wear a costume to work every day? I, I mean, you're I'm I would, on your peers. You're on TV. You're photographed. When when I'm on TV, I'm. That's why you guys always say, oh, me wearing a hat. I take a hat off all the time when I'm not being photoed. But you're not stuff. a duck suit at work is what I'm saying. By the saying. way, somebody said that you, you – I thought this was a funny joke because it's really not a joke. You dress up in a costume every day. 
Every day you dress as Daryl Hammond. Oh, you well, literally. maybe. He, we I mean, I think everyone it, it is a costume. Like I, I would, I've suggested at work that we do have costumes, just like like uniform. Right. It'd be much simpler. You but what if you? What it. if we gave you? Uh, see, here's the problem. I, if I bought into that, and then you got fat, you look fat in your uniform. Well, I would like a uniform to... that, what, like, like just that for heavier set people. And, and this is a. It's it's funny, but it's. A, I'm sure a lot of heavy set people feel like this. There should be an acceptable thing. Like like a like just like a sheet with just your head sticking out that is okay uh, for a guy to wear. Vortex. Vortex. So, I, I have a question, question about the holiday party, Benji. So you said I, on, I hate that when you act like that. But okay, go well, hold, on, hold, hold on, hold on, everybody. Remember what they're going to talk about. We're going to take a break. We're going to be back in a few minutes, and we're going to pick up on this conversation. <laughs> This is Baby Dude. This is a wrap up show. John Hay and Gary Lante. The wrap up show. Okay. We're back in the wrap up show. We're going to go right to the phones. I want to talk to Bob. No, sorry. I'm going to talk to Richard in Pittsburgh. He has something to say about Benji. Richard, what's your question? Hey, Gary. Love the show, man. You guys have been on a roll this week. Thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to tell you, you're one of the hardest working guys I know of. And uh, I was over in Afghanistan about six years ago. You come over and paid us a visit, and that really that really touched a lot of people's hearts. So, that was an amazing trip that I'll never forget. But oh. what, do you, what do you want to say uh, about what happened on the show today? Well, uh, I have some advice for Benji. I think what you ought to do tonight when you go home is take a nice scented bath, light some candles, smoke a Virginia Slim, and watch a Lifetime movie because you're acting like a little bit. <laughs> you're right. All right, I don't smoke, Seriously, but man. Really cool. But Benji, what, he, I think what he's saying in his own in his own nice way is that you're being a little well, a little bitchy. Listen, I could not, I could hide my. What, what's for Richard? Thanks for, for what, what branch were you in, man? I was uh, actually I was in the Marines, and then I did some time in the Army, and I did some time in the Air Force. Well, well, thank you for your Why service. Why don't make a switch around like that? That's cool. Thank you for your service, but, but, and uh, but 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 I uh, listen. I I could not express this, but it's like I'm just being honest. That's how I feel, and you 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 probably have a better attitude about that than I do. How much uh, do you weigh? Man, we're, all, we're, uh, we're all there, dude. I'm 205 right now. I'm six foot, so I'm almost oh my God. myself. I kill to be 205. Well, well, uh, you know, you 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 you're right, but I, you know, I'm just being honest how I feel, and uh, I'm you know, I'm gonna wrap this up, but I, do, I probably, you know, what as you get heavier, you do have more estrogen, so it might be why. give us a call eight 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 stern one hundred. I'm gonna wrap this up and go to another topic, but I do want to finish up by saying. You realize when, when, when you, like Howard, I think was trying to point out, you're making it all about you and you're saying you're not, mm -hmm. but when you make it something that works for you, do you recognize that you put the other rest of us in an odd position? I, okay, I, how, uh, no, how hard it is to be at a party and look at you in a toga. Why? Why would Because it's be? just so strange. Oh, stop it. And so it's just, no, I'm not, I would, I stop. <laughs> John, just like, stop. John, just stop. Silent, John Hine is silently shaking his head yeah. very disapprovingly, but he can't say how he feels. But, 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 but speaking of the, no, 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 the, just listen. Uh, Howard had a good point about that's a way to take my focus off myself. Just like, hey, how can I make everyone as anyone I interact with as comfortable as possible? Like, I want Ryan Rasmussen to feel great. I want Chris Libertini. They're the guys that aren't on the air a lot, and Al Ragone. Like, but but they're the guys that were. Al shaking his head. All, uh, oh, he is. Yeah. But we're the, they're the guys I would love to have a great time, and, and that's that's a good way to think of it. However, I would be more comfortable if only my face was showing. John is forcing me to get out of this conversation. It's, it's really it's against my will, but I think we've heard everything we have to right. hear about Benji and his toga and people's reaction to it. But what I am most interested in is John Lieberman. You've also retired from drinking at the holiday party. This was your second announcement today. I want to know, can we expect drinking John back at the uh, holiday party this year? Here's what I said. I'm going to have a drink or two. I'm not dry, but I'm just not going to get crazy like I've gotten last year, last and the year, year before, and the year before, and the year before that. Here, here's a big question. I don't want to get too, too into your personal yeah. life. You're bringing a date to the party. I am. How long have you guys been dating? Uh, three months, maybe. Because mm -hmm. that usually has a lot to do with, you know, if you don't know her that well, you may not, you may not be ready to show her that side of you. However... You may just show her that side of you by accident tomorrow anyway. She's seen that side of me. Already? You know, I In mean. Three months? She, well, yeah, she, I thought you aren't drinking as much anymore. I thought no, Richie's wedding was a one-time deal. Let me, let me, let me clarify. <laughs> I mean, she knows about that side of me. So that's not it, but that's not the reason. The reason simply is I've just decided that I'm going to have a drink or two and I'm not going to get crazy. All right. Uh, I want to take another phone call as we wrap up here. I want to talk to David in Ohio. David, how are you today? I'm doing good. I missed my favorite thing of the, like before the Christmas break, the, the gift giving on mm. the air, the 
the shredder. Why is why isn't that on no more? The Secret Santa and stuff. Gary, you care to explain? I do. I do. First of all, um, the shredder we only had for one year. And it didn't even really work that good. It was a it was a gas powered shredder. When we turned it on, everyone sort of choking on exhaust fumes. We couldn't find an electric one. We stopped doing the Secret Santa because it it just got strange and ugly. And and not even that. It wasn't even that. It wasn't good for the air. Stressful off the air. It became so stressful for everybody to buy gifts for everybody that we made this agreement to completely stop. And we did. There was a more there was a moratorium on it. It lasted like two years. And then slowly it crept back to where it was, where people in the office give each other gifts, and Howard sends some gifts, and 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 now it's a really gray area. And I'll tell you a perfect example. Today, I got um, sort of surprised. You know, Fred and I haven't exchanged a gift in like four or five years. And Fred gave me a small but very nice gift, and I was not ready for that. And I thought to myself, well, I could go out and and just buy Fred a gift of similar value. It was a gift card to a nice place. And I thought to myself, you know what? I went online. And I sent the gift to Fred's daughter. I sent her some One Direction stuff <laughs> because I just feel like it, it, it's. It, it, I got to tell you, the three weeks before Christmas, the, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, especially when my kids were younger, and you're working on your family gifts, and you have to take gifts that you have to buy and send to um, your relatives in another state, and then everybody here was probably one of the most stressful things I ever had to deal with. And John and I figured out a gift. That's, you know, we sort of throw a mini party, and that has made life infinitely more easy for me. Yeah, I mean, look, when I first started working on this show, Christmas time, the last day before we all left for Christmas break, was uh, a time of intense gift giving by everybody in the office and everybody on the air. It lasted till about 2006, 2007, which was the last year that Howard actually gave out individual gifts to the staff. And the reason that it stopped from that perspective was because somebody in the newsroom complained that they didn't get an individualized gift, that, that they just got one. One giant gift for the newsroom while everyone else got individualized gifts. Howard said that was the straw that broke the back. He's done giving out indiv- individualized gifts. We're now doing a holiday party every year. And then after that happened, the gift giving in the office has slowed down to a trickle. That That's pretty much what well, happened. Well, it's not a trickle. There was a, I, would, I would say there was a lot of gift giving going on in the office today. Yeah, but it's... But I think what Jason said, because I know, I, I think I can say this for you. The heavy hitters that used right. to give the heavy Rob gifts, and Fred and, and Howard, and me, I would, you know, and John Gary, yes. In fact, for, like I had a whole thing, but it was it was a chore. Like Jason, for Jason, every year I thought, like Jason, I'm going to try to find him a really cool electronic gift, but that meant like really sitting down thinking what it was, ordering it, having it delivered, wrapping it, and then and then I got to tell you, the schlep. Of, mm-hmm. of, of driving in that day, and a lot of days it snowed, having an intern meet me outside to take in six bags of gifts. Dude, I've seen you just hand a lot of cash over to an intern and say, just wrap these, please. Just get, like, it's so funny. Hey, we got to get to John and the headlines, but before we do, I wanted to go around the room really quickly. Who is going to make the biggest ass of themselves at the Christmas party this year? Gary. Not, I'm not saying you, I'm saying go to Gary. Probably Benji, because I think even despite all the conversation, I still think Benji will do some version of what he wants to do to not look fat, which will still call attention to him. I don't think he'll be the biggest. I don't think he'll be the biggest. If you're going, that's one. No, make the biggest ass. Of, when we come back, it's the person we're talking about because they made a, an ass or a spectacle of themselves at the party. I, I think Richard almost felt like he gets a free pass this week. Like he basically told us, <laughs> I'm a drunk and I can't really control myself. So watch out world. I think that's a pretty good guess. All right, Bench. I don't consider it an ass. I would enjoy I will enjoy it. But I think Steve Brandano will explode this year. He's going to rip his clothes off, Ooh. get naked, and jump in the food. I have like been working on my body. I'd like that if that happened. John Jason, oh. Lieberman. I'm going to say Richard as well, because I think Richard is defiant. Steve Brandano? I've lost money on this guy last year, and I will never bet against him again. John Lieberman, I was never so disappointed as I was last year. I was like, this guy's a professional. He won't make the same mistake. He said he hasn't. John Lieberman. Uh, John Hine, are you going to try and talk and answer? One, he has one, okay. (laughs) And uh, a word. Sal. <laughs> oh, I, I do believe that there will be some Sal karaoke. Uh, he's been sort of empowered, like, okay, I know I'm not the best singer in the world, but, you know, I'm the best singer at the show, which is not even true. I think Fred's the best singer at the show. For, 
I, for the I same really reason Steve voice. Brandano said, I too picked John Lieberman, and the reason is the exact same. I actually believed in John last year, and I went over to talk to him, <laughs> assuming he was sober. Yeah. And about five minutes into the conversation, I realized he wasn't looking at me or listening to a word I was saying. He was so far gone. And with that, John Lieberman, what are the news? What are the headlines in the Howard 100 News? So much today, guys, coming up on Howard 100 News. Ben Stiller, of course, coming to the show, as Gary mentioned, with no entourage all by himself. Lisa G goes one on one with him. You're going to want to hear that interview. It's very eye-opening on the heels of Howard's great interview. <laughs> Meantime, Howard Stern sitting down with us one-on-one, revealing his own anxieties over the upcoming birthday bash, and also telling us he can do nothing to ease the anxiety of the whack pack over whether or not they will get tickets. And no surprise here, his name just came up. Richard Christie says he will drink at the party, hear what he has to say. He says he even knows the bartender by first name and expects to be the first wow, person there. Wh- wh- and last person when, to leave. when you stay at the bar, right, and you're the only person left and everyone's gone by eleven fifteen, eleven thirty, and you're there till two, you should know the bartender. He's name. the only one who can spend such a large amount of money at an open bar right. event. Howard one hundred news confirming that our show Alcoholic will be drinking at a holiday party this year. Great job, guys. Anybody have anything to plug? Uh happy holiday to everybody. Benji? Uh Mike Gant, you're fat like me and you should be wearing a duck costume too. Uh, wow, shrapnel. Jason? Uh, you know what? If you want to see what Benji wore to the uh, holiday party, I think it was either last year or, or 2011, go to our Facebook page, The Howard Stern Show, on Instagram, on Twitter, at Stern Show. Hey. Uh, we posted the picture earlier. Put today. out my last year picture. I just had a Lisa I don't remember. you, you got to send it to me. I just what, is, that, okay. is that the one where you're dressed like a terrorist and you have a repeat? No, Put out my picture oh. from 2012. Okay. Send it to me. Li- I just had a Lisa tweet okay. it to you. All uh, the hickeys. We forgot to, by the way, forgot to mention that the year you were dressed weird, you had an insane amount of hickeys on your neck, which is also I have sensitive skin. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, okay. we Steve, anything? No, ask Brandan on Twitter. John? John Hines on Twitter, at John Hine. I'm at Reporter J-O-N. Let me speak for uh, John Hine and everyone here wishing everybody a happy and health, healthy and safe New Year, holiday, everything. And what are you pointing at? We're back tomorrow. And, with and live we are back shows. tomorrow with a live show on Thursday, tomorrow. So don't miss that. Hopefully, uh, John's voice will still be shot and I'll have to come in and do this oh, again. God help us. <laughs> Thank you very much and enjoy your day listening to us on Howard One and Howard 101. Yeah. Here's what's coming up. Dr. Harry Fish. Dealing straight. Coming up next on Howard 100. Howard 100 News. The revolution is on. Ben Stiller, he walks alone. No more bullshit. This is a Howard 100 News Brief. I'm Mike Hembrick. Ben Stiller in studio Wednesday. A great guest and different than most big power celebrities. It's Howard 100 News, behind the scenes. I think we do a great show, but I appreciate the fact that a guy like him has been with us for a very long time and sticks with us. Despite the fact that actor and director Ben Stiller is a Hollywood heavyweight, Stern Show executive producer Gary Delabate appreciates that the guy walks into the Stern Show compound all by himself without some big posse following him. I think there's a familiarity with the show. He's also been coming on for such a long time that I think there's a comfortable factor. Ben agrees. He enjoys his time talking to Howard Stern. Because I think Howard as an interviewer he actually listens to you. So you're having a real conversation where most of the time people ask you a question and they'll look down at their notes. So it's like a real interaction, which is great. You know, you've got a big movie coming out Christmas Day, but what do the Stillers do for Christmas? We go to Hawaii. We have a house in Hawaii and so we have like a hula Christmas. <laughs> we uh, strip down and get in our board shorts and uh, all go surfing together. Ben's new movie, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, opens December 20th. 25th. Lisa G. Howard 100 News. Howard 100 News. Ours is the most demanding. We demand a lot of our reporters. We take this shit seriously. Howard Stern knows the whack pack is on edge over Howard Stern's birthday bash tickets. Is there anything the king of all media can say to ease whack pack anxiety? There's nothing I can say. There are only 1,500 seats in Hammerstein Ballroom, and we're trying to accommodate uh, the whack pack, but we don't know how many whack packers we can have. 
So uh, the Whack Packers are important to me. They're important to the show. People love them. They love to see them and hear them. So I know we're planning on doing something with the Whack Pack, and we're, we're trying to figure it all out. What can I say? There is nothing I can say to ease Bobo's anxiety. Governor Alley and Lieberman. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? Could they be the newest rap phenom? Show writer Sal Gavinelli, Howard 100 News reporter John Lieberman, not likely. Howard, not impressed. Give me the beat, turn it on, I'll hear this song. Reporter John, word is born, I, I approached the worst thing ever, right? It's a mean Face off the read. It was a day that everyone remembers. Writer, producer Sal Gavinelli and Howard 100 News investigative reporter John Lieberman locking horns in a freestyle rap battle. John was beaten soundly by Sal, and now these two have worked together. With the assistance of legendary rap producer Scoop DeVille, who put them on a track called Do It Still. Jason Kaplan tells me what he thinks of the collaboration between rappers John Lieberman and Sal Governale. I refuse to refer to it as a rap. I refer to refer to it as a song. And quite frankly, I refuse to refer to it as a collaboration. I uh, I, refer, I, I, I reject all the words you use to describe this to me, uh, Shuli. So I guess the question is, what do I think about Sal John? Uh, both good guys. <laughs> Will Murray, what are your thoughts? I thought it was okay. You know, I mean, you know, you can only do so much with awful talent. You know, you can put a fucking what is it an air freshener on a turd and it'll smell okay for a second basically but uh you're not singling either one of them out they're both turds as far as you're concerned no they're both equally horrific Julie agar howard 100 news another howard 100 news brief at the top of the hour or as close as we can get 